Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Woodward Buddhist Temple's virtual Dharma service. Happy to see all of you again, although virtually. As usual, we will start the service with the chanting of the Vandana and Tisarana, and this is found on page 7 of the Red Service Book. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samman sambhunasa homage to him the exalted one, the enlightened one, the supremely awakened one, Buddham Saranam Gachami Nama Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami I go to the Buddha for guidance I go to the Dharma for guidance I go to the Sangha for guidance <laughs> The recitation for today is Shinshu Pledge 2. This is found on page 6 of the Red Service Book. And trusting in the vow of the Buddha and reciting the sacred name, I shall proceed through the journey of life with strength and joy, reviewing the light of the Buddha and reflecting upon my imperfect self. I shall strive to live a life of gratitude Following the teachings of the Buddha and discerning the right path, I shall spread the true Dharma. Rejoicing in the compassion of the Buddha, respecting and aiding others, I shall do my best to work towards the welfare of society. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. The sutra for today is 12 homages, and this is found on page 120 of the Red Service book to be followed by the Dharma talk to be given by Dennis Tashiro. like the elephant space Buddha's eyes like the blue lotus thus I bow to Amida Buddha's form round like the moon bright like thousand suns and moons Buddha's voice like the nightingale Thus I bow to Amida Buddha's face 
beggar on Connell's crown, adorned with wondrous features, Buddha subdues evilness. Thus I bow to Amida, beyond compare Amida's pure, virtue shining clear like space, all benefit from Buddha. Thus I bow to Amida, Bodhisattvas all renowned, Maras to praise Amida, Primal vow made for our sake, Thus I bow to Amida, Golden ponds were lotus bloom, Towers a throne of goodness, Buddha lives like the mountain king, Thus I bow to Amida, Bodhisattvas come afar, Attaining true happiness, They revere the Buddha's face, Thus I bow to Amida, All life changes like the dew, We have no permanent self, Buddha teaches this law to all. Thus I bow to Amida. No evil in the pure land and no fear of evil paths. Faithful hearts honor Buddha. Thus I bow to Amida, saving us through many ways. No tempters, no evil friends, birth leads to enlightenment. Thus I bow to Amida. Amida, thus I have praised Virtues boundless like the sea These virtues shared with others For birth into the pure land Oh, 
Trick or treat. Happy Halloween, everybody. To adults and children of all ages, have fun today, but please be extra careful and safe. Why do we say trick or treat anyway? Does it mean do a trick or give a treat? I'll try do a card trick. I just happen to have a deck of cards right here. So if I do this right, well, so much for that idea. I guess I'll be giving out candy tonight. Please place your hands in gasho for an aspiration, a passage by Renyo. All sentient beings, just as they are. There is no expectation of any transformation or alteration. Indiscriminately, beings are reached by the Buddha's wisdom. Namu Amidabutsu. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this morning's service. If you could indulge me, I'd like to share some things that I want to get off of my chest and my shoulders. Life is a bummer especially during the last 10 to 15 years for me. The glass is always half full. The weather is mostly cloudy, not mostly sunny. Aging gracefully for me is yet to be learned. The years have, had, have gone by too fast. In the last five years, I've had back and shoulder surgeries, and I've visited a physical therapist too many times. Sometimes I feel like an old car with an odometer reading of over 200,000 miles. I've gone past the warranty period. Visits to the repair shop are more frequent for alterations and adjustments for my back, for my shoulders. Flat tires are common, sore feet, Sore legs, hard of hearing. Well, so I've been told. I'm a very used car. Can I do a trade-in? My physical appearance has changed. I got all these spots and creases all over my face. Do they still sell vanishing cream? My once thick head of black hair is now white and thinning. My golf game. Over the years, it's been uh, like a strange bell curve. Early on, my game was improving, my scores were getting better. Then things flattened out for some time where there are no improvements. More recently, my game has gotten worse. I can't get the scores I used to have. I can't hit the ball as far as I used to, and I just can't make the shots or putts consistently like I previously could. My scores keep getting higher. It's good one day, then terrible the next day. When I'm putting, I can on average make one or two putts on one day. Then I'll make two, three, and four putts on the next day. Fortunately, I haven't broken any clubs yet. But I did get my first ever hole-in-one back in March of this year. There was a major item off of my bucket list. Yes. One of my favorite hobbies is baking. I usually bake three to four times a week. Fortunately, I have family that eat most of everything. Otherwise, my weight would be totally out of control. Things turn out well because of great recipes with good ingredients 
and good instructions. Some things don't, don't turn out well. A bad recipe, perhaps, but occasionally I find that I forget to add an ingredient, or I wasn't careful about following the recipe instructions. I get frustrated because things don't turn out perfect. A few of my failures ended up in file 13, trashed. I've done things so many times thinking, I can do this, only to not getting things right and failing. Washing my car and doing yard work are too difficult for me and best left to the neighborhood car wash and to the yard man. Like an aging car, my horsepower seems to have decreased. Speaking of driving, I find myself short-tempered at drivers who don't seem to know how to drive, who try to break laws by making illegal turns, and who let themselves get distracted and cause accidents. Speaking of short-tempered, I get upset about people refusing to wear masks and people refusing to get vaccinated. I need traffic lights to signal me when to go for the gusto, when to be cautious, and when to stop. From Green Lights, a book by Matthew McConaughey, yes, that Matthew McConaughey, he writes, what's a green light? Green lights mean go, advance, carry on, continue. On the road, they are set up to give the flow of traffic the right of way. And when scheduled properly, more vehicles catch more green lights in succession. They say, proceed. In our lives, they are an affirmation of our way. Their approvals, support, praise, gifts, gas on the fire, attaboys, and appetites. Their cash money, birth, springtime, health, success, joy, sustainability, innocence, and fresh start. We love green lights. They don't interfere with our directions. They're easy. They say yes and give us what we want. Green lights can also be disguised as yellow and red light. A caution, a detour, a thoughtful pause, an interruption, a disagreement, indigestion, sickness, and pain, a full stop, a jackknife, an intervention, failure, suffering, a slap on the face, death. We don't like yellow and red lights. They slow us down or stop the flow. They're hard. They say no, but sometimes they give us what we need. I believe everything we do in life is part of a plan. Sometimes the plan goes in as intended, and sometimes it doesn't. That's part of the plan. Realizing this is a green light in itself. The problems we face today eventually turn into blessings in the rearview mirror of life. In time, yesterday's red light leads us to green light. All destruction eventually leads to construction. All death eventually leads to birth. All pain eventually leads to pleasure. In this life or the next, what goes down will come up. It's a matter of how we see the challenge in front of us and how we engage with it. Persist, pivot, or concede. It's up to us, our choice every time. The heart of Buddha's teaching is the Four Noble Truths. Buddha teaches us that life inevitably contains dukkha, suffering, pain, and dissatisfaction. Indeed, life itself, the very fact of being born, getting old, and dying is suffering, never mind all the limitless other types of stress 
and sufferings experienced in a lifetime. So I need to pivot. Why be consumed by the worries of everyday living? It may only lead to more dukkha. I need to maintain a better attitude, look for positives in everyday living, enjoy fellowship with others, relatives, friends, and even strangers. Enjoy golf outings, the camaraderie with fellow golfers, the fresh air, weather, and the scenery. Maybe I'll buy a new set of golf clubs. Try having fun baking. Be diligent with the ingredients and instructions. Enjoy the process. Share with more people. I must live my life to the fullest. I realize that nothing is or lasts forever. A boulder, huge one day, will get weathered over eons to become pebbles, eventually turn into sand and dust. A seedling, tiny and fragile, grows into a magnificent tree, but it too will wither and die. Compared to a boulder or a tree, our lifetime is like a blink of an eye, and not too many of us live very long. As stated in White Ashes, life swiftly passes, and who among us can maintain our human form for even a hundred years? In his book, Everyday Suchness, Yome Kubose writes, life is changing, all things are changing, all conditions are changing. So let things go. All abuse, anger, criticism, let them come and let them go. Whatever we do, we should do sincerely, honestly, and with full strength. And when it done, when it is, when, when, I'm sorry, and when it is done, it is done. Do not become attached to it. Many people become attached to the past or to the present and neglect the important present. We must live the best now with full responsibility. When the sun shines, enjoy it. When it rains, enjoy it. All things in life, let them come and let them go. This is a secret of life that keeps one from getting upset or being, being neurotic. The Buddha says that all things in life and in the world are in constant change, so do not become attached to them. Life is about impermanence, and we must accept things and changes as they are, the good, the bad, the happiness, the sadness, aches and pains, and getting older. Yomi Kubose also writes in his book, acceptance is very important in life. In the English language, however, acceptance has a connotation of a defeated attitude. Well, it's something I can't help, so I have to accept it. Well, there's something better than this, but since it came to me, I can't help it. I just have to accept it. The true attitude in Buddhism is not such an attitude of defeatedness. Acceptance means understanding of the truth, accepting the fact. Accepting the truth means a true understanding of life, not the feeling of a victim, not a feeling of sacrifice or being defeated, but understanding the true facts about life. Then from here, our true life begins. Without accepting things as they are, without knowing the truth, what is it, what I am, then true life does not begin. Acceptance of, li of true life as I am, as you are, or the conditions in which you are, the true realization of the fact is acceptance. Instead of becoming a victim of the conditions or whatever it is, you become the master of the situation. This is acceptance. Acceptance has a very positive, active, dynamic meaning in Buddhism and not the defeated, 
negative sense as implied in the English language. There are some things we may want to hold on to, perhaps dearly, but we need to let go if it becomes a burden. I need to learn from the past and live a great today, but include some planning for the future. I, trend, I try to handle everyday stresses, things like when someone cuts me off on the highway. When driving down the street, I seem to catch every red light. While standing in the grocery checkout line, I realize the other lines are moving faster. Yes, life isn't fair, but life is short, so enjoy it. Seize the day, carpe diem. Live for today as no one knows what will come tomorrow. Richard Carlson, in his book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and It's All Small Stuff, writes, so many people spend so much of their life energy sweating the small stuff that they completely lose touch with the magic and beauty of life. When you commit to this idea, you will find that you will have far more energy to be kinder and gentler. Remind yourself that life is okay the way it is right now. So life isn't always cloudy and gloomy. The glass is half full. The weather is mostly sunny. There are things that cheer me up and brightens up my day. Golfing. I've learned to lower my expectations about my scores, but rather focus on enjoying the day with my friends. Baking. I still have high expectations for my baking. I try to be more diligent about the uh, adding all the ingredients and following instructions. Grandchildren. I look forward to weekends when my grandchildren, Everly and Jet, come over for the day. I try to fit in different activities, crafts, games, water play, or just chilling together. By the end of the day, I'm worn out and tired, but it's a day well spent. I'm charged up for another week. We all need to be accepting. Life doesn't have to be a bummer. Things don't need to be gloomy. Things happen. Bleep happens. But that's life. Buddha teaches us to prepare for the future and how to live our lives day by day. Pay more attention to today. Enjoy your family and friends. Have a meal together or do something together. Be absorbed in the beauty of the surroundings. Maybe go to the park or to the beach. Live wholeheartedly for today. Live to the fullest without measure. I realize our older ages, our, our older years have silver linings. Lately I realized that I have more nephews and nieces than I thought. I learned this when I'm out and about. People address me as uncle as their way of being respectful. Aging has privileges, senior discounts, early senior shopping hours. When vaccinating shots are available, we get priority and get our shots before others. I'm a kupuna. I'm a silver fox. In closing, please place your hands in God's show. The secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn for the past, not to worry about the future, and not to anticipate troubles, but to live wisely and earnestly for the present. Namo Amida Butsu. Thank you for spending your time listening to my message. Please have a great day. The kata for today is Into the Breeze, and this is followed by the Nembutsu. Tell me why, oh why not?
Existing things are impermanent and without abiding self. They are like the moon reflected in water, like lightning, like shadows, like dew. The Dharma cannot be expressed by words, the Buddha proclaimed. Thus I bow in reverence to the Noble One, Amida. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. This was taken from the Junirai, a chant that we did this morning. Well, thank you very much once again for attending this virtual service and hope to see you again next week at the same time. In the meantime, as always, take care. Goodbye.